time I look into your eyes I feel love and passion with each touch of your hand You're my world girl, the apple of my eyes And on this special day, please hear me say Every day with you is a valentine Let's celebrate this love with a glass of wine And have I told you, girl, that you look so fine, fine Cause every day with you is a valentine A valentine Hi there. Times seem tough for a lot of people. Economically, relationally, and generally. I want to invite you for a special series I'm doing in the month of May. It's titled The Big Four. These are four things that will turn your situation around. No matter the kind of hardship you're facing, don't miss The Big Four, because these four things are guaranteed to change your life. I look forward to seeing you. To hold both on the mainland and on the island. Invite a friend. Come prepared. It's your season. God bless you. In building relationships that last, it begins with improving one's self-esteem, looking beyond face value, and choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams. They're not connected. In her mind, she felt twins? No way. This marriage don't hold. The party must hold. <laughs> Say twins, confirm. When he sees them, how cute they are. Chiki, 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 junior. That they are cute, he will say. It's women that are not concerned that the baby is cute. What do you concern me? Cute or no cute? The hospital be there. I don't care. Many times you've heard stories of when a woman has twins or triplets in the hospital, the man will just carry in load. Twins, triplets. Who could take care of them? Go carry. He will pack his bag. Just wear his shoe, his jeans, and wallet. That's where you go. I've seen, I've seen many marriages that the man's wardrobe is still full of clothes till today. He has left for 10 years. He left the woman in the house with his wardrobe. Say, he take my cloth. I can't have time to pack down. If you catch me, he leave a whole cloth. Just carry him body. Go start another life. You're a brute like ghost. I, not once, not twice. So. Women don't know that. A man can uproot himself from here now. Go to another country and start start on that life with another woman straight. <laughs> Are you getting this? Straight. Carry on. I, 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 I've, seen, I've, I've seen stories that a man will have two or three wives that don't know each other. All the families, maybe he's like a doctor, so he'll be telling them, I'm on call, I'm on call, I'm in the hospital. So he has three wives, two wives sometimes. There are two families with children, no? they don't know themselves. They don't, it's only when he dies. That he will just see two, three, four families. Complete family, wedding, everything. Children. So women don't get that. So don't confuse all those things. that have ten children for him. So what? The more the children serve, the more they run. Hallelujah. So I have a child for him. It's an undue influence. Don't let that influence your decision to marry him by force. Number three. Undue influence. Hmm, this one is money. Number three is money. The Bible says that a gift perverts judgment. Did you bring up that scripture? 
The Bible said a gift perverts or distorts your ability to make a decision. A gift there, that word gift is the word bribe. So it means money that is given to you with the intention of affecting your decision. That, so the word gift there is talking about a bribe or a money given to you to impact, to impact your choice. So, I've seen many people um, meet a guy or meet a girl. They don't like the guy. They don't like the girl. But once gifts start flowing, Valentine is coming. <laughs> once gifts start flowing, the guy starts buying you things. My brother, listen. All of us are human beings. We can be influenced. There's a way somebody will buy you things. It will influence your ability to make a choice. The secret is not to collect gifts from somebody you don't want to marry. If you know you don't like this person, stop collecting gifts. And you know, let me tell you something. Most women are too greedy. Especially in this part of the world. They are too greedy to say no. So the guy buy you iPhone 7. You know you don't want to marry him. But you buy you iPhone 7. You don't say no, no, no since your no. Be, after iPhone 7, turn to maybe. <laughs> then he buy you... Sergio, he buy you a wig from Sergio's shop. Sergio, which was your expensive wig? I don't know, I can't hear from you, but he buy one of those expensive Sergio wig. You put the hair. Your maybe. Move to May. <laughs> May 13 as date <laughs> of wedding. Look at this. He said, a wicked man taken a gift out of the bosom. Look at this. To pervert what? The ways of judgment. Say, a wicked man. The word wicked means twisted man. Somebody that is twisted in his mind. Say, it takes a gift. A gift there means money, means bribe. Out of, his, out of the bosom to pervert the ways of what? Judgment. Perverts your thinking. Stop collecting a gifts from somebody you know you don't want to marry. You, your resistance will wear down if you keep eating that chicken. Stop eating the chicken. Many girls are, are, are thieves. You don't want, you don't want. You go to Mr. Biggs, you are ordering anyhow. Give me 13 meat pie, 3 scotch egg, 6 sausage. Only you, but you are saying no, no, no. But if they order anything where you like, very soon you will soon become the sausage. If you don't want now, please stop collecting the gifts. The gift will pervert your judgment. If you keep collecting those gifts, it will impact your ability to make sound judgment. Many girls have entered a trap because the man had money. He could buy you expensive gifts. Things that ordinarily in your life you never thought you could have. That's why I say woman should be working hard. Work so hard that they can, there's no amount of money that can bribe you to marry someone. Work that hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's only in this part of the world that women think that they are meant to be dependent on men. Those trends, those days have gone. Even men now are looking for women that have money. <laughs> those days have gone. So, work hard for yourself. Don't let any man come and mess up your life. Because even if a man marries you, he's very rich and he marries you because of money. The day he decides to drop you or divorce you, you are left hanging because you've not built yourself. You are dependent on his money. Hallelujah. And ladies, please watch out. There are a lot of criminal men today looking for rich women to marry. They don't love the women. They're just chasing the woman's money. And the moment something happens, you see, that's the problem. Once the foundation is wrong, it can never last. Because if something happens to that money, the love too will shake. Once recession affects the money, it will affect the love. Because the guy is marrying you for your money. Be careful. So if you're a rich woman and you have your work to do, if a guy is coming close to you, don't spend a dime. You can be a billionaire. If you say hi, say hi. Hello, hello. Let's go out. Yes, let's go. Pay. Don't give him money. Because many men are trying to follow men to collect their, their money. Some will even collect your money and not marry you. Don't, don't give him money. If you love me, let's be going. Some women are even funny enough that they will even sponsor their own wedding. They will sponsor the guy to marry them. A guy that you paid giving money to marry you can never respect you. That's a stupid thing. I know some women do that. You pay, you are the one, the, the, the list they gave him from your village, you are the one giving him money to go and, let him go and walk. If you can't sort it out, it's not man enough because 
All those things, even though some of those lists, I know they are exorbitant and all that. But the truth is that if the man can't even make a way to get those things, how will he sustain a family? How will he sustain school fees and house rent? If he has no faith, he has no sense to, to, to work on raising that money. Hallelujah. Alright, so money is an undue influence. I've seen many cases. A guy is toasting a girl. The girl is saying, no, 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 no. And the guy, the guy is, and it's a guy I know. Very well to do. So he began to buy gifts. iPad. iPhone. Next thing we hear, I do. <laughs> After iPad and iPhone, it's I do. The gifts. The next thing, the girl was saying, no, pastor, I don't. Because I was canceling them. I don't like him. I'm not interested. <laughs> Chinese restaurant. Her blood, they cool down. I, I'm still don't I'm not married. <laughs> buy this gift. Buy this. Next time I met her, she said, we are praying about... Uh -huh. <laughs> we are praying now. After that, they married. But still, the marriage didn't work. They are divorced today. When the foundation is faulty. That's the thing. You can make it to marriage by hook and crook. Staying inside the marriage. Because marriage is like a prison. Staying inside there. Now that you have deceived the person to enter. It's a different ball game altogether. I can never forget many years ago, one of my good boys then, he was a regular church guy then, he came to me many years ago. He said, Pastor, I'm getting married. I said, what happened? He said, one girl that has been toasting him for many years has come to marry him and is ready. I said, ah, what happened? You didn't want to marry her since, so what, what, what changed? He said, the girl told me that she's getting one million naira. And Pastor, if I can confirm that she has that one million naira, I'll marry her. This was many years ago, so one million was still a lot of money. So I told him, so when you finish spending the one million, what will happen? Many people are trying to enter permanent situations based on temporary breakthrough. The guy has money now. It might be short term. What will happen when the money finishes? If you marry because of one million, when you, then you rent a house and do wedding, has the one million gone? If two of you believe in, with yourself in poverty, then you will know you hate her. I've seen those cases oh, when they marry because of money. Once the money goes, you will see love turn to pure hatred because the money is gone. The thing that was keeping them, the thing that was sustaining them has finished. Hi there. Times seem tough for a lot of people. Economically, relationally, and generally. I want to invite you for a special series I'm doing in the month of May. It's titled The Big Four. These are four things that will turn your situation around. No matter the kind of hardship you're facing, don't miss The Big Four. Because these four things are guaranteed to change your life. I look forward to seeing you. To hold both on the mainland and on the island. Invite a friend. Come prepared. It's your season. God bless you. It's based on money. Like I told you at the beginning, anything that is the source of a thing, Becomes a sustainer of a thing. If a man or woman marries because of money, you keep using money to settle, to sustain it. It's not worth it. Number what? Number four. Family members is another undue influence. Watch out for those guys that because they want to marry you or they want to toast you, they will go and tell all your family members and all their own family members to start putting pressure on you. My brother, there was a case I had to re deal with. The guy is very rich. He wanted to marry this girl as a second wife. The girl first said, no, no, no. The guy carried the girl's mother and children or cousin or whatever and sent them abroad for a trip. All expenses paid trip. Not the girl, the, the mother. 
You know how the story is going to end, Abby? <laughs> Undue pressure. If you are the mother, you come back from that kind of trip, all expenses, but you tell the guy, are you mad? Are you okay? <laughs> you tell the man, please, go and bring it. We are married. Don't worry. Go and bring it. We are already married to you. Forget it. The pressure will be heavy because he has, put, he has gathered people to pressure you. Be careful of family members pressuring you. They won't live inside the marriage with you. Be careful of your mother crying every day that you want to disgrace me. You want to kill me. Uh, don't let emotional blackmail force you into something you will suffer for the rest of your life. You suffer for nothing. You suffer for nothing. Sometimes all your mother wants is a grandchild. Though. Not you. She's tired of you. She wants to trade her child in to get a new model, a grandchild. <laughs> so she sell her child to get grandchild. Be careful of all those family pressure. Or the man buy land for your father in the village. Or pay the debt your father is owing in the village. <laughs> and pressure starts. Say, my daughter is a good man. Is a godly man. Ah, is he godly man? <laughs> because he has godly money. <laughs> Be careful of pressure from family members. A guy wants to marry you, or a woman wants to marry you, you go and start telling everybody. A girl wants to marry you, you don't want to marry the girl, she will travel to the village and go and wash plate for your mother. So that they will say she's a good girl. I've seen many of those pressures. They never lead to a good marriage. I'll just do one more. This one too is another common one. International passport. Hmm. Big on due influence. He's based in Australia. He's based in London. Have you met him? No. Do you know him? No. I've just seen his passport. He's a British citizen. American citizen. You have not met him. Is he a mermaid or is he a mad person? You don't know. It doesn't concern you. <laughs> as long as there's passport, as long as I will leave this God-forsaken country called Nigeria, that they won't even allow Two-Face to do much and protest. <laughs> as long as I leave this country, I'm okay. I don't care. Any passport, even if it's Cotonou passport, or Ghana passport, I will marry. Many people have married passports, not people. They marry the passport. Red passport, blue passport. I will travel abroad. I've dealt with many of those cases. It can influence your judgment. You know that you don't even know this guy. You don't know who he is. But he's a citizen. You're in your mind. You're already seeing yourself on the streets of New York. No matter what they say, you are seeing yourself on the plane. <laughs> I've had to cancel these cases. So. And once your mind has been fixed to go abroad, nothing makes sense again. Nothing makes sense again. <laughs> One guy, he did all this internet love. That's why we tell people, if you marry on the internet, you enter a net. Be careful of all this internet love. So one guy did internet love. They met on internet. They started to talk. The guest said, you see, when it's on internet love, let me tell you, you see, I'm not saying it's not possible not to, um, to marry on internet. Yeah, I've seen, we've seen people that claim that it's working. But 90% of the time, it's not going to work. Because already, first of all, it's a ground where desperate people meet. No normal person is going to look for a spouse on the internet. It's people that are desperate. They're ready to meet anybody, anywhere. So that is the platform that we are using to meet. So most times, those people, everybody scopes themselves. Because how can you, when you are chatting with somebody, if you type LOL, you might be eating. But you can type LOL. You are not, LOL means laugh out loud. You are not laughing. But when it comes to chatting, you can be writing what's not true. That's the point. That's the danger by internet. You can be talking to a different person. He can put on that person's picture. And be talking to you and you think you're talking to the right person. It's not the same person. So they began to chat. The guy said, oh, I live in London. So yeah, great. She said, I'm a British citizen. Ah, <laughs> the guy said, don't enter. Meanwhile, to the guy here, they take picture in front of big houses. They say, be big business tycoon. 
boat, then they dropped their sail. Finally, they were all excited about the level they met here in Nigeria to marry. When they came, the guy was borrowing car, big, big cars, borrowing house, so big, big house. The guy too was still forming British citizen, ain't it? Ain't it? <laughs> now, so he could register the nest, then marry. After wedding, as in after she came to visit first, they did all this paparazzi. She went back, then she came for a wedding. They married, Koyi registry. As they married, now let's go home to one of those big houses you were showing me. My brother take her to one bedroom flat house. One bedroom. She said, Ah, is this your house? He said, Now, so meanwhile, by this time she was pregnant. <laughs> she had the child. Let's go and do our child's passport. Bring your British. She brought her British passport, only that it was green in color. Because, ah, oh, you deceive me. She said, you self deceive me. <laughs> they have gone their separate ways now. All those things are based on falsehood. Stop marrying for citizenship or for passports. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. That's the greatest kingdom to belong to. God is not an American. He's the God of the whole earth. He can bless you right here in Nigeria. And even if, you, if it's, your, it's God's will for you to live outside the country, he will find a way to get you there. Don't help him by, by joking with something as important as marriage. Many people just marry just for pastors. They don't love the person. They're not planning to stay. They're planning to divorce. Once you start playing with marriage like that, you're already playing with your destiny. Hallelujah. So, with these few points of mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe I've convinced you to be careful of undue influences. Don't drive or don't date under the wrong influence. It's very dangerous. Hallelujah. Every marriage that will last has to be built on love on friendship, on compatibility, real stuff like that. Not on money or sex or have a child or a passport or all these things. It has to be built on remarriage. And I pray for you that you will find that marriage of your own dreams in the name of Jesus. Hi, I believe you enjoyed watching today's episode of Love, Dating and Marriage. I want to let you know that every relationship is built on love. And the Bible says God is love. So without an active and living relationship with God, you cannot love the way God wants you to love. If you're watching this program today and you are not born again, you don't have a, an active relationship with Jesus Christ, I would like to pray with you right now. Wherever you are, can you just say these prayers after me? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, you are now a born-again Christian. Look for a good Bible-believing church around you and let us know about your experience with God. Write us, send us our details are on the screen. We would like to hear from you. God bless you. Hi there. Times seem tough for a lot of people, economically, relationally, and generally. I want to invite you for a special series I'm doing in the month of May. It's titled The Big Four. These are four things that will turn your situation around. No matter the kind of hardship you're facing, don't miss The Big Four, because these four things are guaranteed to change your life. I look forward to seeing you. To hold both on the mainland and on the island, invite a friend. Come prepared. It's your season. God bless you. In building relationships that last, it begins with improving one's self-esteem. 
looking beyond face value and choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams.